Okay. So when is it too late to become an architect? Or when do you know that maybe you're too old for this? This is something that I get asked often. I've had people messaging me saying, hey, I'm in my late 30s and it's something I've always wanted to do. Is it too late? So today I'm going to talk about what I think, whether I think it's too late or not at what stage. I'm also going to give you this crazy technique that puts your life in this weird graphical timeline that kind of helps you answer the question yourself. So this is for really anyone and whether you want to become an architect or maybe you're just like making a big life decision at a certain time, or maybe you're making a shift or maybe you're like me where your almost six year old said, Hey mom and dad, you guys are really old. <laughs> and I thought, Hmm, let me show you something. And you tell me whether you think I'm old or not. You guys want this technique? Stick around. I'm going to lay it all out here for you. All right, let's do it. Welcome to Design, Create, Inspire. Thank you, as always, for joining me here on YouTube or over on the podcast. I appreciate each and ever, every one of you. If you're watching this live, like Tuesday the 10th, then I want to invite you. I'm having a free webinar tomorrow, the 11th. I don't want to dive too far into this with too much information, but there's a registration link below where you can grab your seat. You can come hang out with me. We're going to talk all about the architecture exams, um, becoming a licensed architect, all that good stuff. So go check out that link. Come join me. But today, most importantly, I want to talk about how you can determine when is the best time to become an architect? Kind of. I really mainly want to talk about, is it too old? And I want to read you something that came into me and I don't usually like to be, you know, focused on my computer when I am recording, but I do want to read this because I think it's going to really resonate with a lot of people, especially if you're feeling like at a crossroads or if you're feeling like, you have been in a career path and you're always being pulled in a different direction. So, of course, I'm going to be talking specifically about architecture and becoming an architect, but I invite you to stay along if you are maybe an architect thinking that you want to go in a different direction, or maybe you're in a totally different field and you're just wondering, like, I'm kind of at a crossroads. What do I want to do with my life? Is it a good idea? All that good stuff. So I'm going to read this and then, but I want you to kind of keep that in mind. You can replace the word architect or architecture really with anything. So this is a message I got on Instagram. If you don't follow me, come hang out with me over there at BM Design. I'm very active in my DMs. So come over, chat with me. Who knows? Maybe your next uh, DM is going to be a topic of conversation. So this is what came into my box. It says, I realize I may have a low chance of getting a reply here. You'll always get a reply. I'm always chatting with you in the DM. So message me. I recently listened to your podcast episode on architecture school and would love some insight and advice if you can spare it. I can spare it and I can also turn it into a podcast so more of you can get it. So again, bring them to me. All right. I'm currently... I'm not going to give too much information, but essentially a director of marketing and it's a in a leading tech company in California. I got my bachelor's degree in finance and went to go get my MBA in marketing. And I've been in my current role for five years. Sounds great, right? The problem is I feel stuck in a quote unquote great career that I'm not passionate about and I'm filled with regrets for not pursuing my passion for architecture. Oh, this like weighed on me when I felt, felt this because I get it. I totally get it. And that weight is something that you pretty much like live with all the time when you're having thoughts like this. So let me continue. For years, I've been telling myself to stop complaining. So shut up the voice, shut up the little voice in your head. I'm 35 and have a great salary, a stable career, a nice house, and a wife and two kids and a dog. But the message from this quote keeps eating away at me. Quote, 
the most dangerous risk of all is the risk of spending your life not doing what you want on a bet that you can buy yourself the freedom to do it later, end quote. So I can use some advice. Number one, is it crazy to consider throwing away a good career at the age of 35 to pursue architecture? And two, if I were to make that leap, how would you recommend I get started? Do I go to standard architecture school, online courses, accelerated program, et cetera? So there's so much to unpack here and I've, I'm going to unpack it, but I'm also going to give you this strategy that I actually didn't give him because it's um, something that since then I have, it's essentially kind of like what I've, I talk about a little bit, but it, it puts it in such a different perspective and like a tangible one. And also for our visual learners, it helps put it in kind of that uh, visual way. And honestly, I feel like it's a way where you can do this exercise yourself and kind of answer your own questions. Although I'm also happy to always tell you some of you know my thoughts too. Okay, so I'm going to kind of do this a couple ways. I'm going to read you a little bit of my response from him. I'm going to give you some of my thoughts. And then I'm going to actually draw out this concept. And then um, you can see it that way. So first of all, you know, thanks so much for reaching out and your honesty. I think that's such a big part is like just sometimes saying it out loud can spark this new um ideas and reality and pers perspective of it for yourself. And sometimes even just talking it through, you can answer your own questions. So I said, not feeling fulfilled in your career is one of the hardest things to deal with, especially when it's time consuming and expensive to make a change. So I said, what you're talking about doing feels risky because you have a family, you've worked hard to get where you are, but I believe life is about change and growth which sometimes means trying something new. I see too, as we get older and have been doing the same thing for years, we start to worry we're out of time and there's no turning back. This is so common, you know, he's 35. He's kind of like, okay, I've been in this career. I have all the things. Why am I not fulfilled? And this is so often um, something, and, and I have personally dealt with this exact thing where I start to feel guilty, like, okay, be grateful, like just be grateful for where you are. But if you have this little voice in your head, then sometimes it's important to at least address it and play with that and see where that takes you. And I love that. So this is so funny that I said exactly this is that we worry we're running out of time. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you in a minute after I read a little bit more of this. I would say not to tell yourself to stop complaining. Even if you push it down, it'll always be there and it'll creep up in weird, unexpected ways. I'd also say, don't just drop what you have going right now without a plan. So it's not like I'm saying, yes, go for it. If that's what your inner person is saying, then just throw it all away. Go apply for architecture school. You got this, you know. I have the boat, you know, there's practicality and there's mindset and strategy and all that good stuff. So combination of things. It's possible that this good career is what will allow you to start working on something else on the side to see if it is what you really want. Becoming an architect is a long journey, but not impossible to start at any age. I had people ranging from 22 to 50 in my graduate class. Since you have a master's, you could do a two-year architecture program, which is only two years of your life. And I'm just going to say this too, if you don't have a graduate degree or if you don't have any um, architecture experience and you do a three-year, still only three years of your life. With that said, a background in marketing and finance allows you to work in an architecture firm now if you're interested. That might be a great way to be in the industry and decide if you really want to. So this is something I think is really important because architecture can be a little glamorized and oftentimes you don't really know what it's like until you're in it. And so especially if you're going to be switching up your career or making a big shift like that, I recommend a couple of things, either 
going and taking a couple classes, which actually I think I talk about, and just like seeing what you think, or also trying to get a job in that career, like in as something else, maybe not as an architect yet, but just to see what it's like. Because again, the real world of architecture can be a little different than the glamorized side of architecture. They say most architects aren't great until they're 50 plus. So in this industry, you're still a baby. You have plenty of time. If it's something that you think you'll always regret, go for it. If it's something you're unsure about or you're on the fence, get your feet wet while working on the side for a small firm architect who needs help with marketing and our finance, or even take a class at your local community college. A lot of community colleges have drafting classes, so this could ease you into it to see if you love it without having to change your current job. So I guess the answer isn't necessarily black and white. Like it's, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna tell you exactly what to do. I'm just gonna offer you some advice. So it's always hard to make a decision to pivot in your life. So make sure whatever you choose, be open and honest with your family so they can be supportive. And ask yourself, what's important to you? What brings you happiness? How will your life change if you go for it? And what feels right? Your gut probably already knows the answer. Good luck. <laughs> so hopefully that helps you maybe even if you're starting to think of making a shift into architecture or different plan. But I want to go into now visually putting this into perspective. So going back to this concept of, you know, where you're 35 and we start feeling like time is running out. And this highlighted to me the other day, we're sitting around the dinner table and I don't remember exactly what we were talking about, but my daughter, she's going to be six next week. And she says, well, mom and dad, you guys are old. And I get it to a six year old, you know, mid thirties, we're old or even to like a 19 year old I'm old. But I said, well, what is old? And she's like, well, you guys. I'm like, oh, well, what about like maybe Nana and Papa or Oma? Oh, yeah. Well, they're old. They're just older. And I said, OK, well, I want to show you this, this visual. And then I want you to tell me what old is. So let me pull out my iPad. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this super rough. So, you know, I'm an architect, don't judge my drafting skills. <laughs> All right, so this is how I started. Let's take a line, okay? And at the beginning, we have birth. All right, now at the end, we have death. And I said, okay, what age do you think you will die? And I said this to my husband, and let's just, hypothetical. We kind of went into a whole little concept for this and oh, this or this. And we ended up deciding on 90 because that was an easy, that's easy for this uh, exercise. And I was like, well, by the time we're 90, who knows with AI, we'll probably live to 190, but let's say 90. All right. All right. And at the beginning, obviously zero. Okay. So then I broke it down. So half of that right here in the middle, this is half your life. We've got 45. And then I just chunked it, right? I have, okay, a quarter of that. We've got 22 and a half. Quarter of here, we've got 67 and a half. All right. And I just started to kind of place that. And this is what I said. I said to my daughter, I said, point on here, on this map of your life, your birth and your death, where you think mom and dad are right now. And I have to admit that I put a little asterisk before I asked her that. And so I was like, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have done that because her answer might have been different. But she still did a little bit older. She did like 45. And I'm like, no, look at my. So I said half of this is 33.75, which is essentially like in between my husband and I, I'm 33 next week. He is 37, forget, 37. And so essentially we're here, right? And so I'm like, look at this, by this map, we're not even at half of our life. We haven't even tackled 
half of our life. And this was an important lesson for me as well, because sometimes I'll go into this thing of like, I have to get all the projects, dream projects that I want now. I have to get all the awards I want now. I have to, you know, have this and and do this and build the company. And, and, you know, of course, all mine's like business related, but I have to like do all these things. And then I'm like, slow down. Actually, first of all, I haven't even hit my halfway point. There's so much opportunity to come that it's okay if I don't have it all now. And also, not only is it not okay, or not only is it okay, but it's also okay to slow down and maybe chunk it out a little bit differently. Because who wants to like hit all their achievements by 35? So I did that. And then I I broke it down even further. And I showed her essentially where she was in her life. And I said, look at that. Look at how much time you have to do all these incredible things, to decide who and what you want to be and, you know, where you want to go in life. And look at all this time that we have together. And one of the first things she did say was like, oh, but I don't want you to get close to the end. Like, I don't want you to get close to that 90. And I was like, yeah, but look at, then I brought this up. Look at the time between her life and mine. I feel so old to her, but look at how short that time period is. And now think of the entire time we have to go. And it was just such a great um, way to put it in perspective. Yeah, seeing your whole life on a short timeline like that can feel a little, uh, maybe a little intimidating, but it also is really powerful because you can um, kind of look at it in a different way. And then this is what I did next. So often with life, you hear about these different portions of your life. Um, you know, we have growing and learning and building and then resting. And I liked that it kind of easily broke out into these quarters. And the way I then approached it was, you know, this first quarter of your life, So this first quarter of your life, zero to 22 and a half, it's all about growing and learning. So, you know, you're growing and you're learning and you're, you're figuring it all out. Now, this, this next quarter is 22 and a half to 45. That's really where you're coming into your career. You're figuring out what you want to do. You're finding out if you like what you want to do and if you maybe want to shift and you want to change it all, you know? And so this is really like, you know, career. Let's just, let's change this a little bit. So your career, your, your um, family, your um really discovery, right? And that's all the way till 45. It's okay to be building that and figuring it out during that time. And you're still not even at halfway to your halfway mark. Okay. Now we have that third quarter. So between 45 and 67, you've done the heavy duty work. You've got this foundation built. You've started building the walls. You've got the roof on it. And now you can start to really enjoy it. You can start to harvest. You can start to see the rewards. And I think so often many of us live our lives as if we're already in this quarter thinking like, well, why aren't I a millionaire yet? Why do I see these people driving that car? And how come I can't have that? Like, why am I not there in my career yet? And I'm not saying you can't do that. You can't, um, you know, you you can be there and you can have accelerated growth, but it's also okay if you're not there and it's okay to still be making changes and it's okay to, to, to feel like you're still kind of figuring it out, right? So this third, you're, you're really um, harvest. You're harvesting it. You're enjoying it. You're watching your kids growing up. You're Maybe your kids are out of the house now at this point, or they're about to be out of the house and you're watching them turn into the adults that you helped get there. And so, so much, it's so funny because I've always been like an old soul. Like I always wanted to be an adult. I 
honestly did not like being a kid. Um, people are always like, oh, I wish I was a kid again, not a, like adulting so hard. I'm like, oh, would never go back to being a kid again. Uh, so I always really enjoyed it, but I've always felt like, when am I going to get there? When am I going to be like, I'm ready. I'm, re I'm ready for that third quarter. But I've recently gotten to this like, okay, I'm content and I'm happy and I'm grateful. I'm grateful for where I am. And there's so much power and excitement um, and joy and learning and hardship and uh, struggle and craziness that is in this time period that I am, but I know it's going to be something that later in life I look back at with such fondness because it is exciting and it's wild and amazing. So breaking it out like this is so critical to see where are you on this timeline and what does this mean? You're 35, you're wanting to shift or you have had this desire to do something that you're not doing right now. Well, do it, right? You're a little infant baby compared to the rest of your timeline on here. And then we have that third, that final quarter, you know, and really it's like rest, observe, watch, enjoy. And when I looked at this, and I saw, and again, sorry for this like chicken scratch, but you know, this is not meant to be beautiful. I could have thrown it up on Canva, but anyways, when my daughter was like, oh, but that's so sad. Like my, my parents, uh, her grandparents were like, oh, well, they're like closer on that timeline. I'm like, they haven't even hit that third quarter yet. They still got a whole nother quarter to enjoy and relax and even though they seem so old to her and the perspective it put on me is like, yeah, you can think of it as, oh gosh, that feels like really scary that it's so small. Like that your whole life is just on this timeline. That's so small. But how I think of it is like, oh, that rest period looks nice. <laughs> I, not in a way, like I don't need to be 90 yet, but like you have so much to discover and to be excited about and to appreciate and to enjoy and to live that by the time you get to that third quarter, you're probably ready to rest. And like I say, observe and like, and see what else everyone else is doing to grow. And you watch your kids and your grandkids make new discoveries and go to school. And now they're in that hustle and and craziness of their lives, but you're getting to observe it, but then you get to go home and you get to rest and you get to have quiet if you want quiet. And so I really appreciate looking at it in this perspective. So tell me what you think. What quarter are you on? How do you identify? Do you have, does this resonate? Like in that quarter, does it seem like similar? And then also, how did this switch your perspective? And I just realized if you're listening on podcasts, I will put a little viewpoint of this or um, uh, image so that you can see what I'm talking about. But also you can go over to YouTube, watch it over there. Also, you may be not even needed a visual. You maybe were able to visualize it based on how I described it. But um, also the visuals, nothing specific, nothing uh, special. So, um, okay. So yeah, let me know. So I hope that that answers that question for you. And I hope that that answers his question. And again, you know, don't just go quit your job tomorrow and, and go crazy, but also think of your life with that possibility and that whatever you want, you can have, you just got to do it. You just got to know that you want it essentially. All right. That is today's episode. I hope you enjoyed. Please, if you haven't already, leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. It's just so helpful to have people discover the podcast. And um, if you aren't subscribed on YouTube, please do that as well, because that also helps, you know, that good old ag algorithm. And if you are on YouTube, once you are done with this video, thank you. And 
please head over to watch this one. I think you'll really enjoy it. Alrighty, I will see you all next week.